Okay, so we're going to have a look at the draft workbench. So the draft workbench is selected through the workbench here, and we'll pick draft, and then you're presented with uh, the draft workbench tools. So we've got drawing tools, modification tools, snaps, plane control, uh, construction toggle, and a couple of options for font size and colours. So the the draft workbench is for drawing 2D objects and it's also good for nip, for manipulating objects in 3D space. If if you're new to CAD this is probably a good place for you to start uh, learning about the 3D space, um, uh, toggling through the views, uh, looking at different angles of things and basically getting comfortable with how uh, objects are presented in the 3D space. Um, so let's have a look at uh, the draft tools. So the draft tools can be accessed in a number of ways, one of which is to select the icon on screen, follow the hint in the bottom left, so pick the first point, pick, pick the next point and the line is drawn, same for the circle, pick the centre, radius and the circles drawn. Uh, you can also access the drawing tools through uh, keyboard shortcuts, so for line it's LI, uh, circle CI and all these shortcuts and um, information is documented on the FreeCAD wiki which can be found at freecadweb.org forward slash wiki I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, that's the basics of picking tools, uh, using the tools. Uh, now we'll go on to the construction geometry. So if you're doing uh, complicated layouts or um, drawings with lots of detail in, um, one one really useful tool is to turn on the uh, construction. Now this allows you to draw um, lines and features that go into uh, a group called construction. And anything that you draw as a construction can then be turned off using spacebar uh, and selecting the item in the tree, sorry, and pressing space, allowing you to toggle these parts on and off. Uh, so this can allow you to position um, construction geometry and then uh, align parts and components to that geometry later uh, before turning uh, the construction geometry off uh, to, leave, to leave just the components that you're looking for. Um, this is a really useful feature and it's probably something you're going to need to use later on so it's worth having a look at. Uh, so let's have a look at the constraints. So constraints are tools that let you lock the orientation of the component. So an example of this would be drawing a straight line. We can enter um, coordinates manually so we can put 0, 0, 0 and then if we want to draw a line 100 millimeters in the y direction, so a straight line going up, we can enter 0, 100, 0, and we can draw a straight line. Another option would be to uh, draw a line in the y direction, we can press, um, so we can enter constraint mode by pressing just y and that will only let us draw in positive and negative um, y directions. So we can enter 100 and enter. We've got another 100 millimeter long line. Or we can press the shift. So you hover in the direction that you want to go in. So if you want to go X, press shift, and it'll lock us in the Y, uh, sorry, X. Or if we go in the y direction, hover in the y direction, press shift, it'll lock us to the y direction. So we're into 100. So that's three options there uh, manual, 
um, press X, Y, or Z, or Shift. Uh, that's the basics of constraints. So snaps are similar to constraints in that it allows you to position um, a component relative to an existing component. Uh, so an example of this is here we have a datum uh, drawn using construction lines here. Uh, so if we turn snaps on using the, the toggle, we can position a circle uh, central uh, or at the ends of our datums. So if we enter the radius, uh, that's allowed us to position our circle uh, exactly central to our datum. So all the tools use snaps. Uh, sometimes you need to turn different snaps on and off to achieve uh, the positioning that you require. Uh, so here we can snap to the centre of the circle. So that should have snapped to the centre, you see. So maybe I'll have to turn one of these off. Um, so let's try again. Snap to the centre. That's better. Um, and sometimes you might need to just check your preferences um, in the draft uh, to change your snap range. Because if you're drawing very, very tight components, um, I believe zero uh, pixels here means that the snap is infinite. Um, if you change that up a few pixels, it'll only pick. Uh, snaps within a certain range and it can help with the accuracy. Uh, so that's the basics of uh, snaps. The modification tools allow you to manipulate and adjust parts drawn in the 3D space. Uh, not just draft uh, components but any components, um, 3D from the part workbench, part design, uh, anything. Um, they work by um, either selecting the component you want to manipulate and then selecting the tool and using the snaps to select a position on the part uh, to manipulate the tool or you can pick the tool first and then select the part using the snaps again to pick the position. Uh, you can also pick parts out of the, lit out of the tree um, and select a modification tool like that. Okay, so we've got um, a few tools here. It's probably worth going through the wiki and reading about each of these tools and how to use them. Um, but basically, work the same as most of the drawing tools. So you use move, you pick the component, and you can drag uh, to the coordinates you desire or manually enter the coordinates. Um, pressing the escape comes out of the tool and, put, and puts the component back where it came from. Um, uh, that's basically um, modification tools. So if you're working on a drawing that needs to be split over multiple layers such as floor plans of a house layout, uh, there's a couple of ways to achieve this. One is to draw everything on the zero uh, point on the z-axis and then move it later. Uh, so for example here we have two circles, both drawn at zero, zero, zero. Uh, we can see that by looking at the placement here. Uh, what you can then do is draw everything at that level, select the item, and then move it from zero to zero, zero, zero to the new level. We say 20 millimeters, and that'll give you your offset. Um, another way to do it is to use the plane control. So if we set the plane offset to 20 millimeters above the XY plane, we can then draw components at the correct elevation, as you can see here. Uh, what the plane control also does is allows you to set um, drawings to different uh, perspectives so we can set this 
um, to view from a different angle. So we say we want to draw on this plane, um, the Z and X plane. So we can select that and we're looking on the front view so that we can then uh, draw there we go uh, circles or any shapes on the correct plane. Uh, so that's plane control. So lastly for the draft video we're going to cover selection of items. Um, there's quite a few ways to select items. You can use the tree or you can select items in the 3D view. Uh, one way to select things in the tree is just to click on them on individual items. You can use control uh, to select items or you can use shift uh, to select groups of items. Similarly in the 3D view you can select individual items you can use control uh, to click to select groups or you can use shift, press shift and P and use a box to select everything within a window uh, that's shift and B. Uh, you can also access, access that through uh, edit and box selection so that's the uh, that concludes the draft workbench tutorial.